Hi, this is PR Frank, and we are going to continue our study of HTML and CSS in a text editor called Brackets. You can use any text editor for this. Here's how we started the last tutorial. And what we're going to do now is preview this. So I just want to show you what it looks like. If we click that preview button, you can see it just says my first web page and it says tutorial in the tab. If we come back over here, you notice that inside the body element, it just says my first web page. What we normally need to do is we need to wrap uh, some element around that. So we're going to wrap around that an element called the P tag. And P stands for paragraph. So what we're doing is we're designating this as a paragraph. And so if we went ahead and previewed it again, you can see that by switching over to the browser, nothing has changed. Now, once we do a change in here, we can also save it. You'll notice that there's a little uh, asterisk next to this. And as soon as we save it, it kind of goes away. That lets us know it's saved. Let's switch back over. You can see for sure that's not really changing anything. But if we were to type some more text and you know what? I think it'd be easier to go out and get a bunch of text. So we're going to go out to a site called Lipsum. Okay. And this is a Lipsum generator or Lorem Ipsum text. It's just a bunch of placeholder text that is in Latin. And this lets us generate a certain number of paragraphs. So if we click on generate lorem ipsum, there's a random paragraphs with some ads, of course, that we can use. So I'm copying that. I'm switching back over. And instead of my first web page in there, I'm just going to paste all these paragraphs. And as you can see, there are a number of paragraphs. And that P tag is at the very end of them. Let's save our document, Command S or Control S, and switch back over to our preview. As you can see, all of those paragraphs are just run into one big paragraph. And that's because even though over here we have line breaks, HTML ignores line breaks. So what we're going to have to do is if we want to see those paragraphs, we have to close the paragraph tag at the end of each paragraph and put an opening one at the beginning of each one. Okay, so I'm just going to go through and do that. And here's the last one. It already has the closing tag at the end. If I save this and I switch back over to my preview, you can see now they're all separated into five paragraphs. OK, very good. Now, we're going to talk about a few other elements that are useful when you're coding. These are some basic elements that can help you design your page. So let's come back up to here um, to body and let's go to the next line. And I'm going to insert a tag called an H1 tag. Now, this H1 tag is a heading tag, and there are six of them. There's H1 through 6. And the first one is the largest, and the sixth one is the smallest. So I'm going to just type the word heading so you can see that. And I'll save this, switch back over to the preview. And as you can see, heading uh, is nice and large and bold. And so when somebody's looking at my page, they know that that's an important thing. If I just select that whole thing and copy it, and paste, and paste, and paste, and paste, and paste, I can change some things. And if we save it and switch back over to our preview, you can see how those headings go. And the actually, the last heading is smaller than our paragraph text by default. So that's really great if you're using um, some typographic hierarchy or uh, the order of how things should flow on your page. There are two kinds of lists in HTML. There's an ordered list and an unordered list. Let's start out with the ordered list. The tag for ordered list is just OL. Okay. And we need some space in between there because inside of the ordered list, we need list items or LI. Okay, so a, a list item would be anything in a list. Let's list the different kinds of dogs. Okay, so. I'll think of a golden retriever. To make my life easy, I'm going to copy that, paste it on the next line and the next line. So we have three of them. OK, chocolate lab and beagle. So three different kinds of dogs in an ordered list. Let's save that and see what that looks like. As you can see, it says one, two, three in that order. And it says golden retriever, chocolate lab, and beagle. Now, one of the things that people typically get wrong with this is they forget that 
each item needs a list item and it all needs to be inside of this ordered list. As you can see, this ordered list surrounds everything. Now let's make the same list, but we'll change one thing, okay? Instead of an OL, we're gonna make a UL and that's an unordered list, okay? Same list of dogs, but now it says UL surrounding it. And as you can see, it's just a bulleted list, okay? It's unordered. Now the unordered list will come in handy in a later tutorial because this is how we format menus. If we're doing a navigation bar and we have a bunch of menu items, it's all supposed to be in an unordered list and each link should be in a list item. Another thing you should probably know is in the paragraph, each paragraph has this huge space in between it, okay? If I want uh, something to drop down to the next line but I don't want a huge space, I can come in here Let's say it's right here, and I can put in a tag that stands alone, and it's just the BR tag or line break tag. I put that in there just like that. Now watch what happens in my preview. You can see that that aliquam dropped down to the next line, but it doesn't have a huge space. So you can use that anywhere. And typically what people do if they use a line break is right after the line break, they'll put their text on the next line. And that helps the, the reader really see what's going on with that text um, before they even preview it. Now, I'm gonna do something here just to indent all this. I'm gonna select all of this, um, all of these paragraphs, and I'm just gonna tab in one tab. And with all of those selected, you can see it, they all move in at the same time, which is a really great feature. So now all my paragraphs are aligned within my document. Just trying to keep things organized. It's a really good skill to develop early on. All right, now, there is another kind of uh, thing that you can do with a paragraph that helps us kind of set it off. And that's called a block quote. Let's say I take the second paragraph and I want to make it look like a quote out of a book or something. Instead of the P tag, I can wrap block quote around it. Okay. And I'll just make sure to also have a closing block quote at the end. And let's save it and see what happens. As you can see, it indents the whole paragraph on both sides to let us know, hey, we're setting this off from the rest because it's a quote or it's another piece of information. Visually, it helps us see that. Okay, another way that we can set things off is just by having a horizontal line go across. It's just a standalone tag, and I could put one here too. Okay, and that's not an opening or closing tag. It's just like the um, line break except it's HR and it stands for horizontal rule. If we save and refresh, we can see it put these horizontal lines um, wherever I had that HR. So that's really handy for a nice visual application. Now there are a whole series of symbols called entities that you can use within HTML as well. One type of symbol that people like to use at the end of their document is a copyright symbol. All right, and it's just and copy and as you see, it tries to fill it in for me, and semicolon. And once I do that, I save it, you can see in my preview at the bottom, I have the copyright symbol. So I can write and copy 2020 by PR Frank, okay? And that's a really nice way to let people know when you created it and that it holds a copyright. There you go. If you want a full list of these things, you can go to the site we went to in our first tutorial called W3Schools. You can type in entities, and it's gonna show you the HTML entities. Okay, so here they all are, some useful ones. It tells you the entity name. Also, you can use the number to represent it. And there it is, copyright is and copy, or you can do and number 169, semicolon. Just don't forget the semicolon there. And you'll notice something special about that last one is that it turned orange when we used it. So that's just the way it represents those entities. Okay, now let's try to insert an image. Our page right now looks pretty boring, right? It would be nice to have an image up here. Maybe in between the heading six and the list of dogs, we could have a picture of a dog. So let's talk about an important thing about finding images on the internet, okay? If I just type in dog, it brings me up some images. I can click on images and it shows me all these dog images. Here's a nice golden retriever. And, um, you know, Google search used to have the pixel count or the pixel dimensions when you hovered it. it no longer does that. But you can go to tools and size and you can choose any size or 
in this case, I just want to have a, a medium one. I don't want a very large one. Okay, so now I've got all this cute puppy. And now when I hover it, it says 640 by 638. That's relatively good. For the web, you want it to be very low in pixels. You don't want a, um, a lot of pixels in your images because they're slow to load. So I'm going to right click or control click on this. And what I like to do is choose open image in new tab. And what that does is it brings us to the actual image on the internet. Sometimes you'll just get a thumbnail or a preview. And then when you download that, it doesn't really give you the full version. So I choose open image in new tab. Now I can download this, save image as. And a really important thing is to put it in the same folder in which you're working. Um, I particularly like to put it in a, another folder later on called images, but we'll get to that in a future tutorial. For now, I'll just put it in the tutorial folder. And I'll just call this one dog and save it. And as you can see, if I look in my tutorial folder, you can see that dog is right next to my index file. If I go back over to brackets now, I can go in here right between my heading six and my first ordered list and I can type the tag IMG. Now, it is another standalone element, but you have to put some attributes inside of it, much like we did for the meta tag. Okay, the meta element, you had to put attributes in so it understood. So if I go image, I have to write SRC for source, and as you can see, it already brings up this, one of the pictures that we have, which is dog. I can click on dog.jpg, and now the image will be in there. Let's save that and switch over to our browser to see a preview of that. There he goes. There's a picture in there. Now, I'd like to be able to control the size of that a little bit. So I switch over and I come over here and I'm just going to either type in the height or the width. Okay. In this case, I think I'll just choose width equals and I can put in a certain number of pixels or percent. So I'll put 50%. And as you can see, it reduced it by 50%. Okay, I can also put in a certain number of pixels. Let's say I wanted 300 pixels. Okay, save it, refresh, and there we go. So that gives you an idea how to put in an image. Okay, so that's the tutorial for today. We've covered headings, we've covered images, ordered lists, unordered lists, paragraphs, line breaks, horizontal rule, block quotes, and the entities such as the copyright symbol. I hope that helps you in your endeavor to learn HTML and tune in for future episodes where we'll also show you how to do the exact same thing in Adobe Dreamweaver.